The International Festival of Arts and Ideas is created and produced on the traditional lands of the Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill Pawgusset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac, in the land we all call home, Connecticut. We hope that from wherever you are, you take a moment to acknowledge and honor the native people whose land you are on and the history of the place you are in. The International Festival of Arts and Ideas stands in solidarity with black and brown communities and other groups who are targeted and abused by unjust systems of oppression. We support all movements working to decenter white voices and dismantle white supremacy. We are actively seeking to dismantle systemic racism and we raise our voices with those in our community who are already engaged in this vital work. We commit to working alongside you to create transformative change in New Haven and in our global community. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited to be here. My name is Adrienne Jefferson. I'm the Director of Cultural Affairs for the City of New Haven. And I am so thankful that Arts and Ideas asked me to moderate this conversation with Mr. James Top, the legendary graffiti artist, producer, community activist, organizer. I mean, I just can't say enough great things about the wonderful things you've accomplished in hip hop and beyond. Um, and so I'm so excited to be able to dive into a conversation with you today. I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Uh, you know, I wanna thank everybody here at the festival for inviting me and making me feel comfortable beautiful, beautiful city. I can't wait to come back and um, fire away. Well, your family now, once you come to New Haven, people tend to stay, you know, <laughs> stick around. So, you know, we might recruit you. Um, but yeah, so we're going to dive in today. You know, the documentary that we just saw was absolutely yes. amazing. I personally learned so much mm -hmm. that I didn't know about like black books and writing yeah. when it comes to the graffiti style. Right. So let's just start there. Let's talk yeah. about the documentary. What well, inspired this documentary? Well, the first of all, the, the black book is a staple in our culture. Mm -hmm. If you are a graffiti writer, artist, you have a black book. It is sort of like your Bible, which Cornbread, uh, you know, mentions uh, in the documentary. It is what you put your deepest expressions in. It is what you, um, your idols are in your black book, your best friends, their expressions are in your black book. Um, people you don't know and, and, and discover they're in your black book. So the black book is a very essential, important part of this culture. Mm -hmm. Other than the spray paint can, it is the most important mm. thing in this, this culture is black book. So let me ask you, why was it coined black book like where does that come from well as they stated in the uh you know documentary someone had an idea of basically creating this book just for artists to um have blank pages in it and it was already binded it wasn't something that you could rip out black page the, the black book pages and black books were not meant to be removed mm. it is permanent mm. that's why it's binded that's powerful yes mm -hmm. and um you're not ever supposed to take pages out of black books what well, people do but you're not supposed to um me personally i have about 30 35 black books um I've lost a lot of black books. I'm sure a lot of other um, writers have lost black books as as well. Very valuable. When, whenever someone puts their expression in, and, it, and it's someone that's very great and popular in this art form, and you have them in your black book, you you hold on to yes. it. You know, you don't like want a diary to almost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. close. Along the same lines, mm -hmm. along the same lines, um, I one time had a black book and I let someone hold it and 
30 years later, they gave me the book back. That's beautiful. Yes. It do is. you store your black book in a particular area? Yeah, like, how yeah. do you, you protect try to it? Put them, you try to put them in a safe place where okay. someone can't just pick it up. Like, you know, in, in, in my house, I have it underneath the library so that, you know, basically you have no business going underneath there to touch any of those right. books. Right. So I have minds in a place that. I know where it's at. I know they're going to be safe and I don't want anyone to touch it. Well, let's, so let's back up a little bit. Okay. I want to talk about your introduction sure. to graffiti. Right. But before we get there, for those who may not know, okay, <laughs> can you break down the elements of hip hop? There are five sure. elements in hip hop, which you know right. way more than I do. Right. <laughs> but um, if you can break down those elements sure. of hip hop, you know, for those who are interested mm -hmm. in hearing. First, there is graffiti art. Graffiti art is the first element of hip hop culture. We were up, started, and organized before the first MC picked up the microphone. Mm. When I started writing graffiti art back in the early 1970s, the word hip hop was not even coined yet. Mm. From graffiti art, would come DJing. From DJing came the MC. Yes, and the MC, the right. MC actually took a backseat to the DJ. That's right. The, right. The, the DJ was more important than the than the MC. Actually, the MC started out as the hype man for the DJ. Yes, and 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 the MC role eventually expanded that now the MC is, is the star. Right. And of course we can't forget our B-boys and B-girls in, in break dancing. And so then, then there's a, a, a element here or there that is like the fifth one, whether you want to call it spoken words or whether you want to call it B-boxing or whether you want to call it an, a number of other art forms that are very much related to hip hop culture, mm. I think basically, you know, that is it right there. Um, argumentally, those are the core elements of, of this culture. Okay. And you, you gravitated towards graffiti. And as you say, yes. it was before hip hop was even yeah, a thing. Yeah, before the word was, was coined and how graffiti art got started in New York city was that they had a fine a physical crisis in New York City where they had to make a lot of cuts mm. in, 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 in the educational system mm -hmm. in the public schools. And one of the cuts that were made was to eliminate all of the art programs mm. citywide. So I grew up in a generation where they didn't offer art in school. And I wanted to learn art. Um, a lot of the other young people uh, that was involved in this movement uh, were artistic and wanted to learn how to express themselves. So basically someone figured out that you could express yourself and get some hood fame by writing your name mm. and people recognizing it and you would get recognition and, and, and fame and, 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 and be somebody. And so it was kind of attached to your self-esteem. Yeah. And um, can, can you paint a picture for those who may not know of sure. what was happening in New York in the 1970s? Like what was the landscape like? What well, were the neighborhoods like? The, the, the land, like? landscape was that New York City was two cities. Hmm. It was yeah. the haves and, and, the, have and the have nots. And uh, I was on the have not side. Hmm. I, I grew up in, in a housing uh, development in, um, in in East New York, Brooklyn, called the Pink Houses, um, but not too far away from where I lived. That was 
the biggest train yard for the A line. And uh, actually, I used to play in those same yards as a young person. And it made it easier for me to, when I started doing graffiti art, to go in those train yards and spend a lot of time in those train yards creating and, and, and painting my name. And it was all experimental back then because there was no one that was before us. There was a generation before us, but basically they were writing their names, they were tagging, and I was emulating them. And then eventually the art star, mm. art form started to evolve into more than just tags, but now colors and stars mm. and stripes and um, bubble letters and, and straight letters and three dimensions and also going to other train lines competing against other kids our age. And the thing about graffiti art was that it was an art form created by all kids. There was no one over the age of 17 that was involved in this art form. It was no influence by older people, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If you were like in your 20s, you were considered old to be involved <laughs> in this art form. And 20 is not old. Well, it was old for graffiti, <laughs> you know, back in, in those days. So, but do you remember the exact moment in time where you fell in love with writing, where you yeah. fell in love with graffiti? And like, yeah. can you paint that story for yeah. us? I was um, I was in the, in the A yard. I, I went one night by myself and um, I had about three cans of paint. And I'm, I'm in the yard. You know, once you get into the train yard, you had to be as one with those iron horses and the sounds and every mm. step you take, you would feel it and, and you would hear those rocks and and and, and mm. those were the air conditions. And um, I had looked up in the sky. And I said, I, I, I love this. This is, this is what I want to do. And it's, it was funny that 40 something years later, I feel like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that right now. And um, mm. It's been a, a long journey, and, and actually, you would ask the only one that ever asked me that question, and that's why I'm feeling emotional the way I, I am, because um, it's been such a long journey, because when we started out doing this, it was just only in New York. It was just us kids, although it was thousands of us throughout New York City, but we were in competition against each other to use our creativity and our imaginations. But the rest of society mm. did not like it. They called us vandals. They called us a lot of other names. You couldn't let anyone know that you did this because you were scared that you were going to get in trouble and uh, eventually, you know, go to jail. Um, it was very dangerous to go in these train yards. You know, we're talking about if you made one mistake and you touched that third rail, mm -hmm. you could forget it. There was nobody else that was in there, you know, but you. And you would have just been there dead by yourself. Your mother, you couldn't tell your mother and your father. And actually, my, my, my mother and them thought I was crazy. Hmm. Because why would you want to go in the dangerous train yards and write your name? What are you getting out of that? And it was hard to explain to people when you was 12 years old yeah. and 13 years old why you wanted to do it. But there was a need in me to express myself artistically and to be someone in my community that people looked 
at and respected. Mm -hmm. And um, I could be as great as I wanted to be. And um, it was a long journey to be who I am today. And, um, and I was telling you that I would try to go to places like schools or um, places in the community where I thought that they would want art and I, I was turned down. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about thousands of doors closed in my face mm -hmm. and it wasn't a good feeling. And I, you know, I would go home, I would feel bad, but I'd be right back out the next day to try to get someone to take interest in my art form and what I was doing and that it was a good art form and we were kids trying to be artists. We wasn't criminals trying to destroy. We were yes. actually trying to beautify mm. the abandoned properties, the, the ugliness, take away from the bricks and the grays and all of that ugliness and, 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 and tried to add color to our communities, not only for myself, but for the generation coming up behind me, kids. Because as a kid, that's what you want to see. You want to see beauty. You don't want to see the ugliness of what the community was. And that's what I wanted to do. And kind of now, after all these years, um, people like Denise, in this festival's taking a chance on someone like me, whereas there's mm -hmm. been thousands of doors closed in, in my face. I probably but got off the now. topic. <laughs> no, you know, no, because you know what I love about mm -hmm. your story? Number one, it's real, right? And that is Definitely the reality. Real. And also the stigma around hip hop, right? right. Which irks me. It yeah. absolutely irks me. But to hear that, that's why it was developed because of the stigma, but also right. hip hop still has this stigma to it where people are like, and I was saying this to you earlier, people are like, oh, I don't want to listen to that hip hop music or, and, and they act as if it's not art. Right. In which it is. But y'all grabbed that by the horns and said, we're going to create and express yeah. and innovate the way that feels or organic and authentic to us. And ultimately, it sounds to me, and you can correct me if I'm mm. wrong, but ultimately, it sounds to me like it helped to save your life. Oh, most, most, most definitely. Uh, there, there was, I didn't fit into a lot of uh, traditional things. I mean, I've, I've tried. I, I have a college education. Um, think I'm smart enough to work for anybody. I could have done a You're lot of things. Smart. And um, this was my, my destiny. And I don't think that at the time that they thought that spray paint can was going to be this worldwide movement that it is because somehow accidentally mm. we found a way to create with it and I didn't think that was in their scenario because this is a revolution yes and it's a revolution in art because mm -hmm. now we could colorize and we could paint in large scales whereas you couldn't do that before this art form mm -hmm. rose from those same ghettos neighborhoods in East New York and Brownsville and South Bronx, Coney Island and, and Harlem um, yes. and, and, and all those other places where they were taken away from us, but somehow we found a way still to create. I want to, I want to stay there because there's something you said and I wrote it down. I was like, we're going to talk okay. about this today. So in your artist statement, you said this art form being graffiti was born in the 1970s from the hardship and frustration of inner city youth. The New York City, New York City was in a crisis and graffiti yeah. became a form of protest against societal inequity. Yeah. And I thought that that was really, really powerful. I was mm -hmm. wondering, you already kind of did it, but yeah. if you can elaborate a, around the, the role that hip hop played mm -hmm. in social 
activism, social change, using it as a tool for revolutionary acts. Yeah, it, 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 it gave us a voice. And, you know, when you start talking about equality, you have to remember the foundations of all these different art forms, the major contributors come from our communities. Right. And um, at, at the time when we were painting trains, not only were we the kings of New York City, but we were the kings of the world. Mm. And just giving us that power, self-esteem, um, made us feel great and made us feel like we were doing something that was special. And um, graffiti was the flyer for the revolution of hip hop. And I'm so happy to have been a pioneer in that and to bring those pioneers that you've seen in this documentary mm -hmm. together to talk about um, the Black Book and how the Black Book became a major part of this art form because no one ever asked us the question before, just like no one ever asked me the question that you asked me that got me so emotional, Grash. Oh, don't be me. <laughs> <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, it, it, it feels good to express yourself now because um, I feel a lot better. I, recently, I wrote a book about my life in this art form. And um, I was telling Tanya, once I wrote the book, it seemed to be like a weight lifted mm. off of my shoulders mm. because I finally became James Top. You know, for mm. a lot of years in my life, I could not tell anybody who I was. Mm. And imagine doing something and being good at something but not being able to tell the world who you are. Mm. And even people in my own family would say, well, why are you doing this? Because you could be doing something else. Why, why this? Why not, okay, at least get a job working over here. Mm to pay your bills. People always say that when they don't understand a <laughs> yeah. journey and also being the first, like right. you were the first of yeah. like, you pioneered yeah. graffiti in New York, right? Before it expanded worldwide. Right. We talked about that right. yeah. earlier. So being the first takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of risk. It takes a lot of people who are just not going to understand your path. Right. Do you feel like now people finally understand? Um, not everybody but younger people more than the older people because the older people, sometimes they're just stubborn. Mm. They don't want to go, yeah, you know what? And like, I'll do it. They still thinking they're risking mm. their position, their status. And because, you know, this, this art form is... Um, it's not status quo. It may be now, but it, it it wasn't status quo. So a lot of people did not want to take the chance and take the risk on somehow this thing backfiring and and, and losing their jobs mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, hey, I gave James Top a chance and, uh, you know, well, they did this beer over here, but then some other guys came down the block and they did this stuff over here. So, you know what, this mirror over here promoted this to happen and then now we got to clean this off mm -hmm. and uh so you know it was a lot of that stuff and um now my life is easier but it's still hard because um rents and everything else is so high right now yeah so, let's keep uh, it real yes it is you know so you know Opportunities I don't like to miss because there's another opportunity for me to, uh, you know, take care of things that I need to take care of, you know, at, at home, like, you know, food and shelter and, and those sorts of things and, and traveling expenses and 
and everything is just so much money nowadays right. that um and then being an artist people don't never want to pay you well i was just about to ask you that that was my next question yeah. is do you feel like you're being paid your worth as an artist and not just as an artist as a graffiti artist which as you explained many people mm -hmm. still don't understand that art form um i would say it's probably probably not 40, 60, 40 percent would agree and the other 60 percent don't want to because still mm. people are like, yeah, well, you know, you could do it for free. And, uh, you know, I, I have to show my gray hair to let people know that um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing anything not, for not, free. Not, not, not at, we're stopping that narrative. Not, not, I have to look in the camera for this. Not at my age <laughs> and, and, and not at, uh, you know, what my status is that with that comes higher pay mm -hmm. that, that's right and, king uh, yeah you said yeah, it earlier yeah, i'm that, the king pioneer high, of this high, higher pay but i also try to put myself in the, in the right position that um you know i, I give people quality mm -hmm. you know work and 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 my experience i think speaks for itself and um I, I pride on on quality, whatever project I'm I'm working on, and, and now doing uh, documentaries is an extension of my actual artwork, right? Too, and um, I I don't have the, the same sort of track record as a lot of other people. I have not gone to all these different institutions that you know, but um, my life experience. I feel makes up for, for all of that. So let me pivot just a little bit. Sure. You, we started talking about it earlier. You were talking about the stigma of like hip hop in the seventies. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of saying that there's a stigma still today, you know, on yeah. hip hop culture. Yeah. So my question to you is just like your point of view. What is your perspective on the direction hip hop has taken? It's come a long way. Yes. Um, it's very different in my opinion than what it was in the seventies. Mm -hmm. Do you like where the culture has gone? Um, the commercial aspect of it, I feel that some of the people that are, such as the record labels, uh, they have an obligation to do more for mm -hmm. the community in, in general, uh, because two things, um, they have the resources. Then there is an element of consciousness that is out there that is not being promoted yes. like some of the negativity. Now, um, I'm not here to really talk about anyone's expression and whether it's good or it's bad, but there's, there's certain um, elements of the music business that are doing more glorification of the negativity than it is them promoting uh consciousness and positivity mm. and i did the, the artists are out there but they seem to be only paying mm -hmm. those other artists do you feel like they've exploited hip-hop most most definitely most definitely i um i was we're at a party about two weeks ago. I think I was telling you it was a party for Grandmaster Melly Mel. Yes, you told me about that. And um, so, if if you look at his history, he was a part of the the Furious Five. They came out to South Bronx, and um, they were one of the, the biggest groups in the beginning. And um, eventually, I guess you know, well, he became old school now, but. Um, he's still one of the pillars of hip hop culture. Him, Grandmaster Cass, my man Reggie Reg, um, Peso from the Fearless Four. And, you know, these guys um, love their music. And these guys are still showmen. And I, I was saying to myself, 100 years from now, these guys are going to be looked upon as gods hmm. and they still are struggling to get um, people to book them 
mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and to book them to get the sort of wages that they supposed to be getting to do, do their performances. And they are excellent showmen. If you can get an opportunity to book some of these guys that I mentioned, please do because I had a delightful time at his party. He, he performed and he took pictures with everybody, he did not refuse anybody. And he's just as old as I am, but he put on one hell of a show. And, uh, mm. you know, and I, I love the spirit of those original pioneers because their motivation was to have fun and, and make sure everyone else had a good time too, because you know, that word MC means master of ceremony. Yes. Yes. And, uh, they, they, they put on a show and you know, when I have my events, I have all elements of hip hop involved in, in my events. I'm going to have uh, an event in Harlem at Jackie Robinson park. Shameless plug. I know that July 8th, it's, it's called off the walls. Whereas the focus will actually be artists painting on canvases, but we're going to have all the other elements there. This show is going to be hosted by hip hop icon, Ralph McDaniels, who now has a, a documentary on Showtime mm. called Video Music Box. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. heard of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one last event I'm going to be doing in August, and I, I do this one every year, uh, August 26th and August 27th, that's on a Saturday and a Sunday. It's the 40th anniversary of the New York City Graffiti Hall of Fame. Ooh. And if there's some place that I, I paint, I don't paint a lot of places, but I, I do paint there. But we also have all elements of hip hop. And we have different generation of MCs uh, performing as well. I think, you know, this, this culture was meant to be showcased with each and every one of our elements and even the other ones that you, you just got where I was about to go. Exactly don't don't talk about whether it's spoken words or, or beatboxing at the same time to to get the whole experience of uh, the hip hop culture. Yes. So people, it's not just it's not just in hip hop in the elements of hip hop. It's five elements. It's not just rapping. No. <laughs> That's no. not the only thing. OK, we have to get beyond that. We have to use our elements to educate, to uplift our community most, as you are most most as you most are doing. Definitely. I mean, uh, just focusing on the musical part of this culture is not good mm -hmm. enough. You have to be a balanced person. Yes. And uh, the art form of graffiti art has a long history of, of great contributors. Some of them you've seen on, on the documentary. And um, there's some that you don't know about. There, there's some coming up. And um, I'm just happy to have been a part of a part of it period where where does graffiti intersect today um it it is um still evolving mm. it is mm. it's it, there's a lot of different mural uh projects and festivals going on worldwide just not here on the East Coast, but all over um, the country, uh, all over the world. And uh, th this art form is still in evolution. Mm. We can look at this art form as two tales. The early part of it, um, which I was a part of being a, a pioneer and, and, and a trailblazer, and it being against the law, and we were looked upon as outlaws and vandals. And the second part of it, where as in Europe, the people, the government, parents support their kids and look, they look upon this art form as being art 
and artists mm-hmm. and they get full support and 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 do you feel like we don't do that in the united states no i th- i think this is a very suppressive country as far as this art form is mm-hmm. concerned and, and and we need to make changes um as 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 I get older and, and also want to become an administrator to interject this art form into um, different art organizations and in our community, it is still very hard for us to get in. Mm. Um, they would accept me more as an artist than they would accept me as an administrator and those things need to change because first of all, this art form is not recognized as an accredited art form anywhere Mm -hmm. in the world, which means that you cannot get a degree in any credible institution Mm -hmm. that says that you are a graffiti you know, you have a, a bachelor of arts or you have an associate's art in graffiti art. There's not many people who know this art form as well as I do. But to ask me now to go to an institution where someone knows less mm. about this art form and try to tell me what to do right. is ludicrous. Then I don't need Hmm. your accreditation i have my own accreditation that people respect me and if you look at the quality of my work and my body of work you can see that i'm well past even um a master's degree i I would i'm on a phd level so it's it's also trying to get within the fabric of of those yeah. institutions and have and, you had any conversations with colleges and universities well, I, about this? I, I taught at um hostos community college and and when i first taught there it was widespread protesting mm-hmm. of trying to get me fired because of my history but the administration stayed with me i did stay there for for three years and and then i i taught at um the City College in New York, uh, which is also in, in Harlem, host those in, in the Bronx. And and you would figure, well, how would people want to protest against you for teaching graffiti art in the Bronx is crazy, but, you know, they have uh, a, a, a pro, still- pro graffiti uh, movement. And they have an anti-graffiti movement, too. Well, because let me and ask you that. Anti-graffiti graffiti movement has got more resources. Illegal? Excuse me. Graffiti is still considered illegal. Well, um, it the legal and illegal is basically, do you have permission? Right. When it's in a gallery, mm. it's considered art. When you have permission, it is considered art. When there is no permission, it is considered something else. Um, We need more spaces where this art form could flourish and be part of the fabric of the beautification of our communities. That's the movement I'm involved with. We also need a dedicated institution that we could call a museum. That people can go to where art is being displayed and the history of this art form can also be documented and also preserved. And we need this art form accredited on every last single level of our educational system Mm. from grade Mm. school to college. And we need accreditation, of course, in our higher education and our colleges for this art form. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. 
in order to put this art form where it needs to be put at. There's another art form that looks just like this art form, but there's not this art form that they call street art. Back in the days, they used to call graffiti art street art. Now right. there's another art form that they call street art that is being done by mostly people who are accredited. Mm that has gone to institutions. What you're hitting on is really about the way arts and culture in the United States has been deeply colonized. It has been deeply westernized and it has a very boxed in perspective of what arts and culture is. And yes. this is something I'm consistently fighting for and, and you know, against those that, that norm, mm -hmm. setting new trends to how we expand our mindset and our thoughts around what arts and culture actually is in this country and making sure that we accept all forms of arts and culture and, and how authentic it is, especially in the black and brown communities, mm -hmm. right? Um, but even, and y'all spoke about it in the documentary as well, um, the pioneers of a lot of art forms have been black and brown people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they even said it themselves that it was very rare that a white person would come into our communities and, and would do this. But now hmm. you would think it was started mm -hmm. <laughs> in the suburbs <laughs> because all of these kids are doing it. It just shows you the power of this art form and, and how creative people are so attracted to this art form because it brings out your creativity. It, it really does. It's, you could study this art form a lifetime and, and still be a student. Mm. Okay, that's actually the perfect segue because we're coming close to the end of our time and I wanna make sure we talk about sure. your organizing work, the yes. work you've done to give back to the next generation, yeah. the young people who are immersed in hip hop, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what the elements. Can you talk about your work and what that work means to you and it means to the young people that mm -hmm. you work with? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, I have a long history of being involved with this art form from, you know, being barely a teenager, painting trains. Um, I take great pride in um, working and beautifying my community. I'm doing a project uh, as we talk right now with the uh, Children's Aid Society, the Millbank mm -hmm. Center in Harlem, and we're going to create a, a mural uh, for them, for their their children, especially for them coming into the summer camp. And uh, the Millbank Center is located on 118th Street between Fifth Avenue and Malcolm X Boulevard in, in Harlem. And um, I've, I've done a number of murals uh, in Harlem to, uh, you know, help beautify our community. I've worked with a lot of organizations, one in particular is FC Harlem. And... Um, for each of their soccer fields that built, we also connected a graffiti mural along with it. Um, and I talked about my events, my, my television show, uh, which is about the people, places, and events of uh, New York's graffiti art culture. It's been on for 22 years. It's called Graffiti NYC. Mm -hmm. It comes on the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And you could see my show on live stream each and every Sunday, 1.30 a.m. channel six, excuse me, um, www.mnm.org. If you live in Manhattan, you could be able to see me on. Uh, so Channel how do we tune in in New Haven? How do w we access w this? www.mnm.org. Y'all hear um, it? Graffiti NYC Sundays 1:30 a.m. Channel 67. But you can also email me about graffiti events at nycgraffitievents at gmail.com. You could pick up my book. Uh, you could ask me questions on what's going on in New York City. I answer personally each and every email that comes to nycgraffitievents at gmail.com. Okay. And on that note, I want to give you the last word. I want you to tell the people about hip hop. What is something you want people to leave with today regarding hip hop? Hip hop is a powerful force throughout the world today, whether it's music, dance, or art. 
find out which one of these elements that you want to get involved in, participate and and have have some fun. And um, I want to give a shout out to each and every one of the pioneers that was involved in this documentary called Black Book Graffiti Word, Write Large. Thank you to Cornbread. Thank you to Shaman 65. Thank you to Wicked Gary. Thank you to Say Adams. Thank you to Mr. 13. Thank you to Bot 707. Thank you to Archer. Thank you to Duke Nine. Thank you to Roger. And, and thank you for watching me today. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank the International Festival of Arts and Ideas for the opportunity. I feel even better than when I walked in the store. And thank you. Thank you for living in your purpose and being fearless and saying you were going to go down this path regardless of what <laughs> anybody says. You're yeah. unrelentless and it's paid off. And we are really appreciative of the expertise and just what you've contributed through um, hip hop. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here and it was my destiny and I'm going to continue um, my good work uh, with this art form and uh, going to be at every opportunity that I could get to, uh, you know, continue what I've been doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, y'all. So we're going to wrap up. And did we say where, where they can connect with you at? How can people get in contact NYC with you? NYC oh, okay. Graffiti I think said events it. at gmail.com. I'm, I'm on Instagram at uh, James Top Productions. Facebook at James Top. I'm not hard to find. Holla at me. Pick up my book. Tap in, y'all. All right. Have a good night.